In a dark and quiet part of town, there was a young man named Su Kane. It seemed like bad luck had always been his companion. People believed that just being near him could bring trouble. Su King's sad story began when his mother passed away right after he was born. When he was only eight years old, his father also fell seriously ill and left him and his sick brother alone. One evening, as Su King walked through the shadowy streets on his way back home, fate had a surprise waiting for him. Out of nowhere, a thief ran past him, holding onto a girl's back. Without a second thought, Su King decided to chase after the criminal, determined to catch him. But in a twist of fate, he accidentally bumped into the girl, causing her to faint. It was almost like the universe wanted to prove that he was indeed a bearer of bad luck. However, Su King didn't give up and continued his pursuit of the thief. As he hurried through the twisting and turning streets, fate had another surprise in store for him. An old man, surrounded by an air of mystery, was sitting there, solemnly burning some old papers. The old man's eyes locked onto Su King, and he signaled for the young man to come closer. In their conversation, the old man revealed a shocking truth. Su King was actually his long-lost son, a fact that had been unknown for many years. Additionally, the elderly man possessed incredible powers, which he wanted to pass on to Su King. In an amazing act of magic, the old man gave Su King a special gift, golden eyes. This gift would only grow stronger if used for good. But the old man warned Su King that using it for bad things would lead to trouble. Overwhelmed by this incredible change, Su King's strength left him and he fell to the ground. The next morning, he woke up feeling confused, right in the middle of a busy street. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the world, we meet Liu, a friendly and slightly overweight guy who was the only person Su King confided in. Liu's grandma owned a charming little bookstore where Su King often helped out. In the next part of our story, an auction was happening, run by an auctioneer, featuring a valuable dragon stamp from the Chung Dynasty. But just before revealing the precious stamp, a lady named Liu Yu cleverly swapped it with a fake one. She hid the real stamp inside a book and quietly put it under a table, planning to come back for it later. However, destiny took a turn when an unknowing cleaner mistook the book for trash and threw it away. Luckily, the book ended up in Liu's grandma's bookstore, and Su King became its unsuspecting owner. When Su King got back home, he had a simple meal with his caring sister-in-law. She had made dumplings with love, but he noticed the sadness on her face, a sign of their tough financial situation. She shared that she was taking care of all their expenses, like rent, his school fees, and his brother's growing hospital bills. Touched by her sacrifice, Su King decided he needed to find a part-time job to help out, but she begged him to focus on his studies and declined his offer with a heartful plea. After going back to his room, Su King took out the book he had bought from Liu's charming bookstore. To his surprise, he made an incredible discovery. He had a special superpower that let one of his eyes see through solid things. While marveling at this newfound ability, he also stumbled upon the real dragon stamp hidden inside the book, unaware of its true worth. Not long after making this incredible discovery, Su King went to see his friend Liu. Liu then introduced him to a wealthy collector named Tung Gu Bin, who had a deep love for old things, especially stamps. When Gu Bin saw the dragon stamp that Su King had, he was taken aback for a moment. He realized that he had been tricked in the previous auction, where he had paid a huge 800,000 yuan for a fake stamp. To make sure it was genuine, Gubin called in an expert to carefully check the stamp. To everyone's surprise, the stamp turned out to be a real treasure. So, Gubin asked how much Su King and Liu wanted for it, and they humbly suggested 400,000 yuan. A thrilled Gubin gave them the agreed amount in cash, leaving the young men in complete amazement. Convinced that Su King was a bringer of good luck, Gubin invited him to join a stone gambling contest in Yunnan the next week. But Su King was facing a difficult choice. In the hospital, his sister-in-law was pleading with the medical staff for more time to gather money for her sick brother's treatment. Sadly, the doctor wouldn't budge. Su King showed up and put a stack of money on the doctor's desk, asking if it was enough for his brother's surgery. Sadly, the doctor told him it cost one million yuan, which was way more than he had. Feeling desperate, 
He remembered Gubin's invitation and went to find the wealthy collector in the hopes of getting the money he needed. Next, they went to Yunnan, where they were welcomed by a famous stone artist named Mang Si Chang. After enjoying a fancy tea ceremony at Si Chang's place, Su Qing went to the restroom. When he came out, he unexpectedly met the same girl he had accidentally knocked out earlier. He quickly started apologizing and convinced her to go with him to his hotel room. The girl introduced herself as Lu Nin Su, but Su Qing misunderstood her and thought she wanted a romantic date. As a result, he jokingly teased her, which led to a friendly pillow fight between them. The next day, Su Qing, Yin Su, Hu Bin, and Si Chang went to the stone market. On the way there, Si Chang shared his knowledge about different kinds of stones and how to evaluate them. According to Si Chang's advice, finding valuable jade hidden within a stone could bring wealth because jewelers would be eager to offer a lot of money for it. Motivated by this, Su Qing used his special power to identify the stone with the precious jade inside. Together, they went to a shop owned by a seemingly shady man named Bai Saint Jun. At the shop, they chose a stone and had it professionally cut, revealing a red jade inside. But when Saint Jun saw it, he boldly took the stone and said it wasn't for sale. Si Chang, angry at this, confronted him, which led to a surprising proposal. Sang Jun challenged them to a gambling match to settle the argument. Although this strange challenge caught everyone off guard, Su King, confident in his abilities, agreed to the bet. As they were leaving, a group of intimidating gangsters with weapons confronted them. In a quick decision, Su King and Yin Su ran in one direction, while Gu Bin and Si Chang fled in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, Yin Su couldn't run as fast and was captured by one of the gangsters. As danger approached, Su King stepped in and fought off the attacker, saving Yin Su but hurting his hand in the process. Back at their hotel, Gu Bin asked Si Chang why Sang Jun seemed to dislike them so much. Si Chang explained that they used to be college friends but had become bitter rivals in business. This revelation made Gu Bin suspect Sang Jun's involvement in the gangster incident. Meanwhile, Yin Su took care of Su King's injured hand, and their friendship grew stronger. The next day, Su King went shopping with Yin Su. While she was trying on clothes, Sang Jun's henchman kidnapped Su King and forced him into a car. Sang Jun made a tempting offer of 1 million yuan in exchange for Su King's cooperation. But Su King, guided by his principles, turned down the offer, planning to leave. However, Sang Jun gave him a chilling ultimatum. Unless Su King won the upcoming challenge, he would never see his sick brother and friends again. Worried and anxious, Su King hurried back to the mall to find Yin Su, but she had disappeared completely. He realized that Sang Jun's warnings were serious. On the day of the stone gambling competition, Su King was torn between his loyalty to Gu Bin and Si Chang and Sang Jun's ominous threats. He faced a difficult decision that could affect the lives of the people he cared about deeply. During the gambling event, all the participants carefully picked and marked stones with their symbols before giving them to the judges. In the middle of this, Si Chang received a message with pictures of Su King and Sang Jun together. Suspicion grew in him and he quickly told Gu Bin. They confronted Su King, worried that he might betray them. Su King strongly reassured them that he was still loyal and used his special power to identify a unique stone. Just when things got tense, Yin Su arrived and explained that she had left the mall the previous day because she couldn't find Su King. They were relieved to see her safe. A little while later, the judges started cutting the stones. During this process, there was a gasp of amazement from the crowd as a rare diamond-shaped jade appeared. Si Chang felt disheartened, thinking that Sang Jun was going to win with this valuable jade, perfect for making Buddhist art. What no one knew was that Sang Jun had manipulated the outcome by bribing the judges and choosing a specific stone to impress his boss, Kwai Tuo. In a different part of the story, Su King used his golden eyes to carefully examine his stone and confidently marked out where it should be cut. To everyone's surprise, the stone turned into a rare octagonal jade bead, making Su King the winner of the gambling competition. Sang Jun was not happy about this. Later that evening, Su King gave Yin Su a beautiful bracelet, which made her very happy. Their connection grew stronger, and they shared a warm hug. 
On another front, Sang Jun had a tough video call with his boss, who scolded him for his failure. Desperate to make amends, Sang Jun promised to get the dragon stamp and earned one last chance from Kai Tu, but he was warned not to fail again. In another part of the story, Su King and his friends went to an auction to sell his precious jade bead, and it sold for an incredible 8 million yuan. He felt incredibly happy when the auction ended. Afterward, Gubin took the spotlight, showing two dragon stamps. In a dramatic gesture, he tore up the fake one in front of everyone, making it clear that there was only one real dragon stamp. They celebrated this success, and Meng invited them to a joyful bonfire party to mark their victory in the stone gambling competition. But in the middle of the celebration, Gubin was kidnapped by Kai Tu's henchmen. When Su King and his friends heard the news, they didn't know what to do. Then Su King got a chilling call from Kai Tu, who made a grim demand. Gubin's release depended on giving up the dragon stamp. After the recent events, Sang Jun went to meet his boss to explain his failure. He was upset about losing a massive 80 million yuan because of his mistakes and was told he had to pay back the debt. Desperate to save himself, Sang Jun revealed a surprising secret. The dragon stamp had a map leading to a hidden treasure worth billions of yuan. He also said that Kui Tu, being a foreigner, couldn't access this treasure, and he proposed that he should be the one to explore it. Unfortunately for Sang Jun, Kui Tu saw through his plan and responded with evil laughter and a merciless attack for his deceit. On a different front, Su King, Yin Su, and Si Chang started a brave mission to sneak into Kai Tu's stronghold to rescue Gu Bin. They were determined and worked together to overcome guards and get inside the compound. But their happiness turned into sadness when they found Gu Bin locked in a cage with a bomb that was about to explode. Su King tried to use his powers to defuse the bomb, but it was too much for him. Suddenly, Kai Tu arrived with a gun, holding them hostage and demanding the dragon stamp. Innocently, Su King gave Kai Tu the stamp, begging him to let Gubin go. But Kai Tu, driven by deceit and cruelty, refused, saying that only the dead kept their promises. In their darkest moment, Yin Su cleverly distracted Kai Tu with her bracelet, which allowed the others to take away his gun. At the same time, the police arrived and arrested Kai Tu and his gang. Justice was served as the bad guys were finally held accountable for their actions. In the final part of the story, Su King met the mysterious old man once more, who revealed a new power of the Golden Eyes, the ability to see into the past. With this new knowledge, the story came to an end. So, the moral of the story is if you ever find yourself with magical Golden Eyes, just remember, they're great for seeing hidden treasures, but terrible for picking out matching outfits.